Alright everybody, so I thought I, did, I was going to do a different type of video for today. I saw there was almost no content about how to increase uh, FPS on any game, specifically Fortnite as well. On a laptop, there's no good content. You had to research specific things about the laptop or about how it works to find anything that would help you. So I thought I would put it all in one video, help you guys out. If you are on laptop, I know a lot of people are. So let's just get it right on into it. First and most important thing is if you're on an MSI laptop, I am, you definitely want this to be turned on, discrete graphics mode, not hybrid. Basically what discrete graphics mode does is on every laptop you have, there might be a few that don't, but on most if not every laptop, if you have a discrete graphics card, in my case, it's a 2070 Super, in your case it might be some different, but you also have an integrated graphics card on your CPU. So if you have this hybrid mode turned on, it will go through the CPU, it will go through integrated graphics, then it will go through the, the discrete graphics card and then back to CPU. That takes longer than it just going to the CPU to the discrete graphics card and then back to the CPU. Especially when the integrated graphics card is not even near as good as a discrete graphics card. And if it was, I have no idea what laptop you have, but the, the best integrated graphics card right now is, a, is the AMD a uh, Ryzen one with, and it's equivalent to the 1050. That's with 3D cache. Um, but the the discrete graphics card that will be put with that would be like a 6000 series card that's easily 10 times as good as a 1050. And that's just because it's newer. 1050s released six years ago, eight years ago. 6000 series released over the past two years. So even if it is as good as some some discrete graphics card. The one that's going to be installed within the system, it's not going to be as good as. So, discrete graphics mode is the best. If you don't have an MSI laptop, you will not be able to do this through Dragon Center. So, if you do not have an MSI laptop, do not do this. You have to do third-party software, and that will just lead to system instability. If you do it wrong, maybe your laptop won't even work. And that is not something you want. So, once again, if you do not have an MSI laptop, do not use discrete graphics mode. If you even find a way to do it, there are a few ways with um, third-party softwares. Do not. It will just cause so many problems with your computer, and it would just it would just be bad. So, on the topic of Dragon Center, the next thing you want to do is you want to add a game, right? And you want to find the game and put it in here on gaming mode and have it turned on. You go Fortnite, Fortnite game, um, binaries, Windows 64 and then all four of these you want in here. These are exactly what you want in here. Turn on game mode. All that means is it sets the highest priority for the game so it processes it as fast as possible. And it's just, I don't see why you wouldn't do that. So now that we've gone through gaming mode and we've gone through discrete graphics to the best things you can do in Dragon Center, we can finish up the last things. They, I don't think anything else in here even has anything of worth. I'm going to go through Dragon Center now for you guys. Um, best for battery, because I have it plugged in a lot. I don't want to scuff my battery and then just have to have it plugged in all the time. Best for mobility, and people, some people say that 100% when playing is better. I mean, I, playing games is not what I use this laptop only for, so I'd say best for battery. I mean, if you really want to go with balance, but if you go best for mobility and you just keep charging at 100% and you have it plugged in, you overcharge the battery and that would just start to decay faster and then it won't be able to hold much charge. I've had previous laptops that were not MSI that did not have these settings and it was just bad. You can also do battery calibration. I haven't actually done that. I actually need to do that, so I'll do that at some point. So the next settings we're going to go through um, are the uh, Windows settings. So type in the settings in here. And the first thing, the most obvious thing, is graphics. If I can find it, I have not done optimization for a while. Just, uh, it will be easier to type in graphic settings. Definitely turn on hardware accelerated GPU schedule. It is something you definitely want turned on on a laptop. Basically the way it works is it pushes the GPU as fast as it can push it, kind of. It depends on what other settings you have enabled, like in Dragon Center or NVIDIA Control Panel. And it uses specific algorithms, and on laptop, algorithms are your best friend. Because your key thing on laptop that's going to kill you is th heat throttling. It's just horrible on laptop because you have all the components next to each other without much space in between. That's what a laptop is. 
So if you have better algorithms, they can run stuff better. So definitely turn this on. You have to restart your PC to do that, just like you have to restart for discrete graphics if you have an MSI laptop. This is on all laptops, though. So definitely turn it on. Next thing you want to do here, same as in gaming mode, this just applies to all laptops. Um, just browse and then just go here. Oh, wrong one. Binaries, Windows 64, put these all in. Once you have them put in, go to options, put on high performance for sure. Same thing again, just making sure it, it is running as fast as possible on a laptop. It's the key thing. Um, next thing in here that will be most important is game, uh, game mode. Definitely turn this on for a laptop. It's the same thing as before except Windows optimizes it. It's just layers of optimizations and it's just better. Um, on desktop, it might not be as good because the algorithms might end up slowing it down. I've heard both sides being argued, but on laptop, you definitely want this. It is so good. And even if you don't have good um, cooling on a desktop, this is very helpful as well. Turn off Xbox Game Bar. Unless you're using it to record for some reason, it just runs in the background. If you have an NVIDIA card, you just need Shadow Play, and you can do anything you want. That's what I'm using to record. That's what I use to record. It's super easy to use. Don't have to download any other software, and it's, it's just great. Um, next thing you want to do is go to here, notifications and actions. Turn off all notifications. I can't turn off these though, but turn these all off. Basically what that means is your computer won't always be thinking, I need to send you notifications instead of I need to give you the most FPS in the game. That's the easiest way to explain it. Focus assist off, turn all of this off, power and sleep doesn't really matter. I have specific settings for this, so I'll show you, you guys that in a second. Um, and that's pretty much it for Windows settings. Next thing you want to do is if you have an NVIDIA card. I've only used NVIDIA cards. I've never used Radeon. I've used Intel Integrated as well. Um, but NVIDIA is what I'm going to be using. That's probably what most of you guys have, so I'm thinking that will be the best help. Go to your NVIDIA control panel. Right-click here. Go to it. And here. Before I address the elephant in the room of stretch res, I will give you my 3D settings that I use for laptop. They seem to be the best. Image scaling, if you're not going to use stretch res, you should probably use this. You can use this on any NVIDIA graphics card. It's a little wonky right now though. It turns on at times, doesn't turn on at times. It's it's weird. But if you're going to do it, you have to go to, um, what's it called, GeForce Experience. Make sure it's turned on, select your rate. I suggest this one for most FPS if you do do it. And then turn it on here, right? Turn on, make sure image sharpens at 0%. Basically, that's just, that's basically some similar to DLSS. The only way it makes it look at, like it's a higher resolution, but it does decrease FPS as well. It doesn't really impact um, quality at all. If you have image scaling on 0 or 100%, I found. Uh, but basically all NIS does is as it said here, and I will use exactly their words, um, as it says here, it boosts frame rates for optimized games and applications using GPU scaling and sharpening. So basically what it does, right, is you'll see 1920 by 1080, but the game will be rendering 1130 by 625. So basically the game just renders less pixels, but you see all of them. Don't know exactly how that works. If I did, I'd be making the programs but I'm not, so it's just free FPS. Ambient inclusion off, anisotropic filtering off, anti-aliasing off. For some of you, you might want anti-aliasing on because on, I don't know how this works for you. It depends on person to person on specific laptops or desktops, but laptops really. You can get some blur when you slide. So you might want anti-aliasing on, it can help out with that. But if you want most FPS, turn it off definitely. Background application, Mac frame rate off. That just makes sure everything's running as fast as possible. CUDA's GPUs, I have it set on all. It doesn't really matter because you only have one if you have discrete graphics. You could do a roundabout way of doing discrete graphics and for specific programs only do 2070 Super. That could be a very interesting way to do it. I have not tested that. I do not use hybrid graphics, but you could test that out. Um, DSR factors definitely off so what this does is it scales the quality up right so my resolution on my laptop is 1920 by 1080 and it will scale this up to a higher, higher resolution as you can see but 
as you can see down here, you know, it will be rendering it, it will be rendering closer to 4K than 1920 by 1080. Big FPS drops. Do not do that. DSR smoothness and the other anti-aliasing grayed out settings, you should not be able to mess with them. The latency mode on Ultra, no question about it. The key thing about getting more FPS is getting the image to you faster so you can react faster and so the machine processes it faster so it has less latency so it's more like real life where you have no latency in anything you do. So if you turn low latency mode on Ultra, everything will just be super fast. Max frame rate off, you could set this on like 240 or whatever, but it's usually better to do it by individual programs because you know, I might be playing Cyberpunk on max graphics, and I want max frame rate at 60, so I go here, put on 60, then I go to Fortnite, and I have it set on 240, or even higher, can't get above 60 FPS. It's just a weird way of doing it. Um, you do some program settings as well, you just have to do it multiple times. Multi-frame sampled AA, that's just rendering, it takes um, a frame and renders it twice or more, so it just looks better you turn on you'll get fps drops definitely have that off open glu rendering gpu just here let me let me uh auto select or whatever you want it on it'll be whatever your discrete graphics card is so leave it on that power management definitely prefer maximum performance there's no question about it apt adaptive and optimal power do not do that unless it's like you're plugged in and you're losing battery somehow Preferred refresh rate should be highest available on everything. Application control is pointless. Highest available means no matter, this is on desktop too, no matter what monitor or display output you're using, it has the highest hertz, which is just better. It displays more FPS. Shader cache size, I don't really mess with this. Driver default will be fine. I don't know what this is, so. Texture filtering, anisotropic, oh. Anisotropic sample, how is that on? Turn that off, that is not good that that's on. Texture filtering negative LOD bias should also be off or clamped. Basically that means it just filters the game less so it has to do less so it processes it faster. Texture filtering quality is on high performance of course, we love high performance here. Texture filtering trilinear optimization on, just, just does it faster. Threaded optimization on, triple buffering is obviously off. Uh, Vertical sync off virtual reality doesn't matter for this game. So apply your changes when you're done. And that is through the NVIDIA control panel. The next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and get this software. Throttlestop.exe. So I'll show you guys how to download that. Just go into your browser, type in throttlestop.exe download. Go to this one. Do not get the beta, get the regular one, download, unzip. Here, I'll, I'll just download it again for you. Um, server load 2%, let's do this one. Show it folder. And extract all, extract. Delete the old one, go to this new one. Just run it, and you're good. Yeah, throttle stop's already running. So, basically what throttle stop does is it gives you much more control over what you can do. The power plan I'm using is Atomex power plan. I also have, well, click the wrong one there. Uh, I also have some, my brightness is really high. I have, I play on zero brightness. Uh, that's just me. Um, but Atomex's power plan, or for, on the topic of brightness here real quick. If you want to put it at zero, that gives you better battery life. When you're plugged in, it doesn't do anything, so it's just your preference. On the topic of throttle stop though, Atomex's power plan is by far the best one I've found so far. Adam X is a tweaker on YouTube. Go look him up if you want to get some PC tweaks. Do not do the stop Windows update though. I have got so many issues with that myself. I had to clean multiple computers because of it. It was just horrible. Clock mod set multiplier. That's your preference. That's getting in the overclocking area. So if you do that, make sure you know what you're doing. Speed shift EPP. If you're on Intel, definitely turn that on. The throw stop power up um, and throw stop.exe, same thing, it's mainly for Intel CPUs. My desktop has an AMD, my laptop has an Intel. So I'm on Intel and Nvidia on my laptop, I'm on AMD and Nvidia on my desktop. So if you're on Intel, definitely get throw stop. Uh, speed shift EPP, 
turn that on for sure. All that means is it will just switch through cores and processes faster. It's just better. Speed step, all this stuff on, not this stuff down here. C1E, speed step, BRE. Here's where it gets big though, Fiverr. Um, I recently had my, uh, my laptop locked. I did not get to unlocking it yet, uh, but eventually I will do that. So what you want to do is CPU core, Intel G, or don't worry about Intel GPU, CPU core and CPU catch. Basically, um, undervolt it as much as you can until your system crashes, and then take off like 10 or 20 and load up Fortnite or the game you're looking for. Undervolting effectively decreases the voltage through, but through the um, device. In this case, it would be. Can, all right, hold. Let me pull this back up. This is glitching. Um, in this case it will be the CPU core that's the key one here and what that means is it just puts less volts through so you keep you keep decreasing until it crashes because when it crashes it does not have enough power to properly do its task so you want to get your voltage as low as possible as low as possible because that means less voltage through which means less heat produced and as I said on the laptop the key thing is heat is your throttle so if you can do this, certain laptops you can unlock, certain ones you can't. And if you don't even have a discrete graphics card, I remember I did this on um, one with an Intel, it was a Lenovo, it was just an Intel with integrated. Uh, I put this down to like negative 150. That doubled and tripled my FPS just because of heat. It was great. Then again, the game didn't look too good anyhow. But regardless, this is really good. This does not t change your quality or anything. It just makes your computer run better. And then make sure this is pulled up like this to make it work. The other ones I don't really mess with. Um, I don't know them that well. TLR, disable power limit control, do not do that. That will just make your um, computer blow up, uh, which is not good. Alright, so now that we've gone through all of this, let's load up Fortnite. Oh, there's one more thing, there's one more thing. If you have an NVIDIA card, I will show you how to do stretched res on an NVIDIA um, card on laptop. Uh, key things for stretched res are, the first thing, it used to give you increased FOV, now it doesn't. But, it zooms you in, kind of, so your hitboxes seem bigger and just better. Um, that's personal preference, uh, you can get used to it at some point. But the other thing is, since, I'll just show you the values, 1920 by 1080 is native. 1750 by 1080 if you just multiply those in a calculator or do the math I don't know how you do it you have less pixels to render which is massively increased FPS massively decreased input latency it's just great so first thing you want to do is customize right enable resolutions not exposed by the display create custom resolution what I use is 1750 by 1080 use whatever you want my refresh rate is 240 make sure this is as high as possible do not increase it past what your monitor can support that's overclocking your monitor and that can be very very dangerous on laptop it can be very dangerous on not a laptop as well scan type progressive standard automatic do not mess with these timings either I did this um, on my old laptop and I could not use it I had to hook in a new Windows download and just re-download Windows that's how bad it was I had to fully wipe the entire computer I couldn't even get in because the display wasn't supporting the um, timings right so do not mess with that now that you did that select it okay and select it now you probably will not see the changes what you need to go to is adjust desktop size and position what I use on laptop is full screen and you only have GPU and it's just the same thing except it has it it can display scale on a laptop instead of um, GPU scale and if you do that on a laptop your res your display will not display any resolution why I don't know you'd have to look it up uh, I just did it and it most definitely didn't work I think it's something about the way the connectors are in the laptop because on a desktop you connect through an individual cord that you can unplug and replug etc etc so you just plug in on a laptop it's a bit different since it's hardwired in so that might be part of it I don't know but when you go to desk just top size and position through Nvidia unless you have a weird download of Nvidia you only have GPU scaling for a reason so only do GPU scaling you can do full screen, that's why I have it on. That seems to be the best for Fortnite. Um, aspect ratio, integer scaling, no scaling does nothing. But integer scaling, aspect ratio, 
it makes it weirder to do so keep on full scaling um 1750 by 1080 is the one i used so you can go ahead and use that if you want so i'm gonna load up fortnite here and show you my fortnite settings and explicitly how to do stretch res properly on fortnite also when you load up your game make sure you do not have extra desktops here by any means make sure you only have one desktop and no other programs running of course except for throttle stop because that would just make your computer run better i did have part control at one point um but it just became very very clunky and it didn't really increase my fps much because throttle stop was just a better version of it i need to uninstall that at some point I'll probably uninstall it after the video. So now we're logging into Fortnite, right? And uh, we'll go into a creative and I will meet you there. All right, so we're gonna go into, oh, here, let me turn on my double movement. I will be doing a YouTube tutorial on how to do double movement. I will have links in the description and everything. I'll have links in this description for throttle stop and everything. Um, but let's go to my little uh, private island. I use this for free building and whatnot. So here we are, right? And the settings I use are windowed full screen, because if you do full screen, it forces 1920 by 1080, and if you do windowed, it just doesn't do it right, and it causes huge input delay. So windowed full screen is kind of your only option for stretch res on laptop. On desktop, when you can do display scaling, you can just do full screen. That's one of the downsides of it, but hi I highly suggest at least doing some stretch res on a laptop, especially if you're suffering from low FPS. Then I know I have a pretty solid... Um, uh, GPU. It's not a 30 series and it's not a 10 series, so it's kind of in the middle. Um, I know I have a really good one, so I could be playing on max graphics at like 60 FPS, but that would be pointless. So I definitely suggest performance mode. Some people say DirectX 11 is better or DirectX 12, but on laptop, performance mode is by far the best just because it stops thermal throttling, and we all want to stop thr thermal throttling. Next thing is graphics quality, 3D resolution at 80%. Most people have it up at 100%. Yeah, that makes your graphics crispier and everything, but at 80%, you can see just as much, and you get a relative increase in FPS boost. So 80% with stress res, that is some really good FPS with no really decrease in performance. View distance, textures, message, all on low, because we want less thermal throttling. We want the GPU doing less, so there's less thermal throttling. Next up, um, this stuff... Uh, I'll make a video covering movement, so we don't need to worry about this. HUD scale, I do 80%, um, and then I have pickup loop stream off, latency debug stati stats off, control prompts off, and creative runtime performance off. That's just for FPS purposes. Um, net debug stats I usually have off, but recently I've been having issues with my Wi-Fi. Um, let me let me uh, my LAN cable and my Wi-Fi. So let me pull it back up and let's. Let's see. Ah, I'm on zero ping creative. I think the issues have been fixed. I used to be on like 100 ping creative, so um, we can just turn that off. So runtime performance stats off, control prompts off, net debug stats off, latency debug stats off, pickup loop stream off, and 80% HUD scale. This is your preference. I mean, you could put it as high as 125%, but I mean, like, look at how much of your screen that's taking up. Like, there's a, there could be a guy right there, and you just can't do anything. So. That's why I have it on 80%, because anything below 80% is way too hard to look at, and anything above, in my opinion, is too hard to just do stuff with. Um, Keybinds, I mean, I use a weird mouse, I use a tracking ball mouse, I'll be doing a tutorial about that at some point as well. Um, Keybinds, all this controller stuff, the only thing that you need to worry about in controller is slide hold time. Ooh, they decreased that, needs to be even lower, and edit hold time needs to be lower. Holy crap, I'm going to be making a video about that. Because at this point, you can essentially disable sliding. I'm not sure if that's the best thing. They really decreased this. Um, I will put that into my movement video. Let's just see how it works. Crouch spamming's back, boys. Uh, let me put it back to what it was, because that's what I got used to. Right. Oh, I'm an idiot. This um this map doesn't support sliding because I don't have it turned on. This map apparently doesn't either. Uh 
Well, I will maybe be making a video on that on a map that supports sliding at some point in the near future. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the uh, best Fortnite things. Here's colorblind mode, brightness 150, triton nope, and 10. That just makes it look better. I mean, I can I can turn this off, and I mean, just look how darker the game is. And imagine this at nighttime; it's so hard. But that's why I have it on triton nope 10. Um, just brighter, stronger colors in general. For me, at least, your eyes might be different, so that might not work for you. But that would definitely make the dark ones brighter, which is what we want. So that's it for you guys. Use those sayings if you want to. Don't if you want to. Links will be in the description. And uh, enjoy your free FPS if you want to do that. And also, check out AdamX's channel for other FPS tips, like tweaking and stuff and registry edits, which I myself am not good enough to do. But he is. And also do not do the Windows update stop. That will just be bad. That will be bad. So see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed the previous one and this one. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, tell your friends about this. I'm trying to get the uh, tracking ball mouse moving forward better, because it's just been it's just been bad with tracking ball mouse. I'm gonna be custom building my own. I'm gonna be showing that off to the channel here soon. Uh, but I, mean, I shouldn't have to custom build my own mouse just because the stats on the market are that bad. So if you make this channel popular, that could change, and then you could be using an extremely overpowered mouse. And I will tell you how to make it the best, if you want to do that, that is. So, see you guys in the next video. Bye.